Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how ionic compounds form giant ionic lattices. You should then be able to explain why ionic compounds have got high melting and boiling points. And finally, you should be able to explain why ionic compounds cannot conduct electricity when they're solids, but they can conduct electricity when they're molten or dissolved in water. We've been looking at ionic bonding, which takes place when a metal reacts with a non-metal. A good example is the reaction between sodium and chlorine. In this reaction, one electron passes from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom like this. At the end, the sodium atom has a one positive charge, and we now call this the sodium ion. Remember that an ion is an atom with a charge. The chlorine atom now has a one negative charge, and we call this the chloride ion. In this reaction, we make the compound sodium chloride, which looks like this. As you can see, sodium chloride is a crystal, and in fact, many ionic compounds form crystals like this. So in this video, we're looking at how the ions are arranged in a crystal and how this determines their properties. The first key fact is that ionic compounds form giant structures where every positive ion is surrounded by negative ions and vice versa. I'm showing you that here for sodium chloride. So we've got positive sodium ions surrounded by negative chloride ions. Scientists call this a giant ionic lattice. Giant ionic lattices are three-dimensional. The second key fact is that giant ionic lattices have got very strong forces of attraction between the positive and the negative ions. Scientists call these electrostatic forces. I'm showing you these forces here. These strong electrostatic forces hold the positive and negative ions in place. We call these electrostatic forces ionic bonds, and they act in all directions. We can also represent giant ionic lattices like this. Here we're not showing the electrostatic forces, but we know that they're there. Now there are two key properties of ionic compounds which we need to look at. The first is that ionic compounds have got very high melting and boiling points. That's because the strong electrostatic forces require a great deal of heat energy to break. I'm showing you that here. As we heat the ionic solid, the particles vibrate. When the particles vibrate with enough energy, the electrostatic forces break and the solid melts. However, this requires very high temperatures because the electrostatic forces between the ions are very strong. A good example is sodium chloride. The melting point of sodium chloride is around 800 degrees Celsius. The second key property of ionic compounds is that they cannot conduct electricity when they're solids. That's because the ions cannot move. They're locked in place by the strong electrostatic forces of attraction. However, ionic compounds can conduct electricity when they're melted or dissolved in water. That's because now the ions can move and carry the charge. Now this often comes up in the exams and students frequently get this wrong. You need to remember that when ionic compounds conduct electricity, it's the ions that move, not electrons. You'll find plenty of questions on ionic compounds in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how ionic compounds form giant ionic lattices. You should then be able to explain why ionic compounds have got high melting and boiling points. And finally, you should be able to explain why ionic compounds conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in water, but cannot conduct electricity when they're solids.